Hey there movie fans, welcome to the Blues of October. Uh, as always I'm going to show you my latest DVD and Blu-ray purchases that I have gotten over the previous month. And also as always I'm giving a shout out and this one is for Horror Fan Man. Uh, he is a YouTuber from the UK. He has uh, some very nice videos, uh, you know, a very nice collection as well. Mainly horror movies, hence the name Horror Fan Man. And uh, yeah, go check him out and go subscribe to him. Horror Fan Man, the link is below. Okay, first up is this DVD box set from Warner Brothers. This is the Twisted Terror Collection. Uh, the box set itself has seen better days, as you can see there. But it was uh, fairly cheap. I got this for 15, 16 euros, something like that. And it contains Eyes of a Stranger, which I haven't seen yet. Wes Craven, Deadly Friend. I have this this one I haven't seen for a long, long time. From Beyond the Grave, which is a, a fun um, anthology movie from uh, Amicus. Someone's Watching Me, uh, John Carpenter film, which I haven't seen yet though. The last John Carpenter film. This one came out in uh, 1978, which is the same year that uh, Halloween came out. Dr. Giggles, this is a great one. I'm surprised they never did uh, a sequel to this movie, because you know, this, this has franchise potential all over it. And the last one is The Hand, directed by Oliver Stone. It was a rather strange film, but I remember enjoying it a lot. So, very nice box set this one. I always wanted to get this one, but uh, you know, ever since it first came out, which I believe in, was in 2007, but uh, now I have it. The Twisted Terror Collection. And now on to the Blu-rays, and the first one is this fantastic Korean film called A Hard Day. Uh, it's about this police detective who accidentally kills a guy with his car. And he tries to cover it up and, you know, dumps the body. But then, shortly after that, he um, he gets a phone call from a person who has witnessed the uh, event. And he's trying to, uh, you know, blackmail him. And this is kind of like the start of this um, cat and mouse game. And that's all I want to say about it because, you know, th there are some twists and turns in this film that is really, really great. Uh, but I thought this was an excellent, excellent film. And uh, a very nice uh, release as well, this, uh, you know, from Korea. There's a picture on the inside. No, fantastic film, this one. A Hard Day, definitely go check this out. Now here's one of my um, many childhood favorites, Runaway. I haven't seen this movie before. God, for, for ages, it seems like. But uh, this is a great one. Uh, it, it was wonderful seeing this movie again after so many moons. And uh, I remember those uh, mechanical spiders. You know, They used to freak me out when I was a kid. And it still holds up today. I mean, just some of the moments, you know, some of the scenes might seem dated. But overall, in my opinion, it does still hold up. And some of the... Um, inventions in this film you know they have become reality today I mean for example there's a scene where uh, Tom Selleck's son is watching TV in his bed and he's watching it on this small thing which kind of like you know kind of like an iPad only it's a little smaller but um, yeah great film runaway and uh, a very nice Blu-ray release from Germany, by the way. Uh, transfer looks really good. Also got this one from uh, Germany. This is uh, Tales of Halloween. I actually saw this on Halloween. And it's, uh, it's a fun anthology movie uh, with you know, different directors like um, Neil Marshall, who, who did uh, The Descent and uh, Dark Soldiers. Uh, Darren Lynn Bousman, who did Shaw 1... Uh, two, three, and four. Uh, Mike Mendes, who did Big Ass Spider. Lucky McKee, who did The Woman, for example. 
that was actually my least favorite episode of this movie. You know, the one that Lucky McKee made. Uh, that was actually a shame because I thought that, that was going to be one of the better ones, but it wasn't, unfortunately. But overall, I really enjoyed this uh, this movie. Uh, it is compared to Trick or Treat, which is you know very inevitable, of course, because that is also a, a Halloween-themed uh, anthology movie. But it's nowhere near as good as Trick or Treat, but still fun. You know, I still enjoyed it uh, a lot. Frankenstein's Army, uh, not to be confused with Army of Frankenstein's. Uh, I really liked this a lot. This is, it was directed by. Um, a Dutch guy, Richard Raaphorst. Uh, you know, for years he was trying to do another movie called Worst Case Scenario, which is kind of like, you know, this this Nazi zombie movie with these amazing makeup effects. But unfortunately, uh, he could not get it off the ground, so he started his next project, which is this one. And uh, fortunately, he did uh, get it made. And um, I really enjoyed this one. I thought the makeup effects was incredible. It was uh, done by this Dutch company, which is called Unreal, and they also worked on the makeup of um, the Lord of the, the, excuse me, the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit movies as well. But yeah, this is a lot of fun. Great one. Okay, here are a few Blu-rays that I got from Screen Factory. Uh, Swamp Thing. Uh, you know, by Wes Craven. I haven't seen this one in a while. Uh, I, I did not get the chance to see it in October though, but uh, I will check it out someday soon. And I also got Shocker, another Wes Craven movie. Really like this cover, but this cover is a lot better. Um, you know, I've seen it many times back in the day, and. Um, I have to say it, it isn't as good as, you know, back then, but still, you know, it's quite all right. I do enjoy it. Shocker. And then the other screen factory is Candyman Farewell to the Flesh, which is the sequel to Candyman. And a good sequel as well. Next is It Follows, and um, I have to say, I was skeptical about this at first. Uh, you know, everybody was loving it, everybody was, um, you know, saying that this was the scariest movie in a long time. And uh, whenever, I, whenever I hear something like that, I'm, I'm you know, skeptical. I'm, I'm afraid that it might be overhyped, you know, and overrated, so that's why I didn't grabbed this movie immediately but then some people kind of uh, recommended it to me and um, I thought you know I'll, I'll get it I got it for a good price so I I get it and uh, I saw it and I have to admit this movie scared the shit out of me and I'm the kind of person who is who, who is not easily scared you know what I mean uh, I mean, the last movie that really scared me the most was The Black Witch Project, which came out in 1999, so that was quite some years ago. But this movie was so incredibly, incredibly well made. And uh, the, the, the creature, the, the thing, is so effective because you, you don't know what this really looks like, but it, it, it has the shape of what seems uh, dead bodies, you know, different shapes of, of def dead bodies, dead people and all that. But it's so very well done and very well effective. And um, yeah, I was I was pleasantly surprised by this one. I thought it was an incredible film. And also the girl, uh, Micah, Micah, Micah Monroe, who was also in The Guest, I thought she was very good. She was, she's also going to be in the, the sequel to Independence Day, by the way. But no, I was absolutely pleasantly surprised by this one. And it has become one of my favorite movies of this year. It follows. And here is another favorite movie of mine of this year, 2015. It is Mad Max Fury Road. Just an awesome movie. Absolutely an awesome movie. Uh, George Miller, you know, he was 70 years old when he made this movie. And he still got it, if you ask me. He still fucking got it. And you might remember from my 
previous update um, I said that I ordered the American Steelbook but it had, hasn't arrived yet and unfortunately it never did arrive I guess it was lost in the mail but it was pretty much the same as this one only it did not have the uh, annoying 3D there but uh, I did get my money back though you know I got it from a person on eBay and um, he's a very trustworthy person you know, I, I bought other e uh, Blu-rays from him in the past um, but yeah I didn't didn't get the American one and I had my eye on the German box set which has the interceptor in it you know the, the car Mad Max's car and uh, I was waiting you know, to see what to see other youtubers videos uh, because I was I was afraid that it might be this you know cheap looking plastic thing but then I saw some videos and uh, I have to say that the quality of that car looks really really good so I thought you know what fuck it I only live once and I got it and here it is this is the interceptor and this is of course the steelbook that came with it very nice steelbook this one and here's the car I mean the, the quality of this car is really great and it's very very hard as well that very heavy too the details of is very good as well the interceptor unfortunately this only has a very small part in the movie and here's the base which has the uh, you know a piece of the desert and you know, dirt and all that looks really good this is not a toy for decoration only, but you know, I'm I'm happy with it. It was pricey, I have to say, but it's worth it. Absolutely, it looks really really good. And here is another favorite movie of mine of 2015, Turbo Kid, which is described as Mad Max on a BMX, and I thought this was a quite an uh, an accurate description of this movie and um, I mean this movie is not only pure entertainment it is also pure nostalgia I mean this film looks 1980s it sounds 1980s it it feels 1980s you know it, the entire movie just oozes 1980s nostalgia and I absolutely fucking loved it uh, I just had a, a you know a great time watching this movie and if if I only had one minor critical note then it would be the pacing you know it, it's a bit too slow but despite of that this is a lot of fun and I would definitely recommend it to everyone who loves you know movies from the 1980s you know these these post-apocalyptic action movies exploitation movies from the 1980s and such and the gore is is absolutely fantastic it's just a lot of a lot of great gory effect in this film but um, and a girl I think her name is uh, Lawrence LaBeouf uh, she was fantastic in her role I'm not gonna tell you anything about her character because you know the, the less you know about it the more fun you will have but um, yeah I would I highly recommend this film, uh, and Michael Ironside who plays the, the villain, but yeah, I absolutely loved it, Turbo Kid, go check it out, you won't be disappointed. Next up is the UK Steelbook of Spartacus, and this is the 55th Anniversary Restored Edition. They have finally restored and remastered the transfer, and the movie looks better than ever before. I cannot wait to uh, check out the entire movie. I've only seen clips of this uh, Blu-ray, but it's, you know the transfer just looks fantastic, absolutely. Uh, they 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 did previously uh, release another Blu-ray, but uh, the transfer wasn't well. Actually, it was very poor on on that release. But now it looks really really good. So glad to finally have this, and I'm glad that they decided to restore this movie because it really deserved to be you know just uh, restored and remastered and all that and here is the german blu-ray of avengers age of ultron 
which is um, you know a lot different than the first Avengers movie, and a lot darker than the first Avengers movie, but unfortunately not better. Uh, I was actually I would say that this is the first Marvel movie that really disappointed me. I mean there are some great moments in it, absolutely. I mean the the, the uh, Hulk versus Hulk Buster scene is definitely a highlight. But overall, I was a little disappointed, and um, it's, it seemed more like a f warming up to the next Marvel movies, you know what I mean? To uh, Captain America Civil War and to Avengers Infinity War Parts 1 and 2. Uh, and in a way, it is some sort of a warming up to those movies. But that was not the same feeling that I had with the first Avengers movies, you know? And... I don't know, maybe it has to grow on me. Uh, I, I like James Spader, by the way, as Ultron. I thought he was perfectly cast, and he easily stole the show in this movie. But uh, anyway, you can see the uh, the inside there. And the three... Uh, sorry, the two Blu-rays. So the very nice uh, steelbook, this one. But anyway... Avengers Age of Ultron Next one is Eyes Without a Face uh, This is a brilliant French horror film from 1960 yeah, 1960 was, was an, an excellent year for horror films I mean you had this one, you had Psycho by Hitchcock And you had uh, Michael Powell's um, uh, Peeping Tom yeah, and, and they're all masterpieces really So the 1960 was one hell of a year for horror and uh, I've actually never seen this movie before, but I thought it was a phenomenal film. The face removal scene, you know, the, the surgery surgery scene, which upset a lot of people back then. I, th I think it's still very much effective today as it was, you know, back then in 1960. Uh, I thought it was, it looks very real. Um, but no, I, th I thought it was an amazing film. And this is a, an amazing uh, released by BFI. I know the Criterion has also released this movie on um, on DVD, I believe. Only on DVD. I don't think they released it on Blu-ray. But it has some different special features and who knows, I might end up uh, getting that one as well. But um, for now, I'm happy with this uh, UK release. Next up is Eaten Alive. Uh, one for release from Arrow. Uh, never actually seen this movie before, believe it or not. Uh, but I have seen it in October, and I enjoyed it. You know, it was a, uh, it was uh, an enjoyable piece of trash, really. And uh, it's Toby Hooper's follow-up to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, Neville Brand's character looks like he's, you know, one of these, uh, uh, looks like a member from a Sawyer family, you know, from the Texas Chainsaw. Also, the soundtrack reminds me a bit of the soundtrack of Texas Chainsaw. It only has these strange noises and sounds and all that. It's not exactly, it's not really music, but, you know, these, uh, yeah, kind of bizarre, eerie sounds and, and things like that. But uh, wonderful release by Arrow, of course. And speaking of Arrow, I also got this box set. This is the Edgar Allan Poe's Black Cats box set with two adaptations by uh, Sergio Martino and Lucio Fulci. Let me take a quick look at those. It is the uh, Martino film, which is which I prefer to the uh, Fulci one. Uh, the Fulci one is still a very good film, but this one uh, I thought was really good. Uh, it's called Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key. What a brilliant title that is. I mean, they're all loosely based on Poe's, you know, classic tale of the Black Cat, but both of them are very different. Although they both ended the same, you know, the, they both end up with the wall scene. And if you've seen other movies of the Black Cat or if you read the black cat you know what i mean by the wall scene and this is the uh, the filthy one which i enjoyed very much as well and then you have this wonderful booklet 
I have to be careful that there is some nudity, I believe. And it also contains the um, uh, the short story itself by Edgar Allan Poe, which is just uh, you know ten pages long. But this is such a wonderful release by Arrow. Arrow never disappoints. And speaking of Arrow, of course, I have it as well. The Hellraiser Scarlet Box, which contains the first three Hellraiser movies. And I'm glad they only have the first three, because those are the best ones. The rest kind of, you know, sucks. Um, and the first two are, you know, the pretty much the same level. It's hard to say which one I prefer the most, because I, I think one or two are equally good. Three doesn't reach the same level as the first two, but it's still a pretty good film. But Jesus, man, this is such a treasure. Oh, a little unfocused there. This is such an amazing treasure. And I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure you've seen videos of it, or most of you already have this uh, set. But here are some of the, um, the informations on the... Uh, the Blu-rays and such. It also contains, um, you know, uh, short films by Clyde Barker, Salome, and The Forbidden. I believe he made those in the 1970s. I have seen those two movies before, and they're not for for everyone. You know, they're very experimental. You know, uh, also shot in black and white. And Forbidden, uh, it's a very bizarre film, but also fascinating. Uh, at one moment in this film, you see this guy, I believe that's Barker himself, though, uh, dancing naked, and uh, he has this, you know, strange facial expressions and all that. But at the end of Forbidden, uh, you see this man who's being skinned alive. You know, he's lying on the table and he's being skinned. But this, the way it was done, it was really amazing how they'd done that because they did it with paint. And uh, they did it very well. It's a very effective moment uh, in this uh, short film. But um, Jesus, man, what what a what a release this is! This this, in my opinion, this is the Blu-ray release of the year, no doubt about it. You know, I cannot imagine. I know that uh, 2015 hasn't, you know, isn't over yet. There's still some. Blu-ray releases coming up, but I, I kind of doubt that anything that is still coming up can top this amazing release. And Jesus, what a set this is. Unbelievable. Wow. Anyway, that is it for my October update. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.